morning, everyone. So cloud workflow simplified. As I was doing uh, the open source projects, it's about two years ago that I really got excited about the cloud, and today I'd like to share that enthusiasm with all of you. But I think that as an industry, BPM needs to make a shift towards simplicity. Enterprise software has had a notorious reputation for being hard to use. And it's really difficult for companies and uh, building those products to escape from the feature list comparison. And that constant drive for more and more features into the product leads to overpopulated user interfaces. And those complex user interfaces, they can only be operated by power users. Now imagine for a second that sending an email was so complex that you needed a power user. Uh, just like in the days of the telegraph, you needed like an operator uh, that sent your message across the wire. Now imagine what impact that would have on a large organization if that would be the case today. Well, I believe that BPM and workflow is just as useful for everyone like email is. And I think that uh, an organization should not rely on a handful of power users to automate workflow. So everyone must be able, everyone in an organization must be able to build their own workflows. Simplicity is the missing feature here because it is hard to measure or quantify. Therefore, it's often skipped in the comparison lists and dropped as a priority uh, as the product is being developed. So to bring our industry forward towards mass adoption, I think what we need to do is we need to boil our products down to the bare bones essence and make them easier to use. And that's exactly what's happening on the cloud. The successful services on the cloud have exactly done that. It's like strip it down to the essence so that anyone without any training just registers an account, get going, and it goes viral. Simplicity is not only about user interface. It's also about being able to try it out very easily. If you have to rely on an IT person to set up and install a system for you, that's actually pretty complicated. But if you just register an account and you can try it out for yourself, that's also a form of simplicity that the cloud enables. Cloud also simplifies the decision process because it doesn't require very big capital upfront investments which require long and heavy, tough decision processes. Um, if the pay-per-use model makes it so that you can uh, just get going, try out with a proof of concept really cheap, and then as the product has proven itself, then you can roll it out and scale it to bigger projects. And it's the same thing that happens with the other uh, uh, products, but this time you can try it out for real and you know that you'll be uh, using it cheaply in your proof of concept. And so pay-per-use means that also on a departmental level or even teams can start building their own proof of concepts. There's two cloud services that I wanna mention that I think have very successfully, and related to our topic here, that have successfully boiled down to the essence uh, what they are trying to do and the functionality they're trying to offer. So the first one is Trello. It's a shared task list system, and it's actually a delight to use. You can collaborate, share your documents, create your tasks and assign them to people, and uh, you put them basically in lists. Very easy, very straightforward, and greatly adopted. The second one is if this, then that. That's very easy cloud integration, and it enables everyone to build recipes um, so that normal people can build uh, basic integrations. Um, here you can see basically the capability of if this, then that. They have like um, this is the only process that they support. 
So they boil BPM down to the, to the very essence. You can configure a trigger and an action, and that's it. So the process is actually fixed. Uh, and you can just choose from a list of services and a list of triggers. Every service has a list of triggers and a list of actions. And that's all you can do with it. But the result is that normal people actually are able to build quite significant uh, integrations. Just to give a couple of examples. Like if a specific user posts a new blog post, uh, then send me an email. Or if a new uh, YouTube video is posted on this channel, then post, it, uh, post an update on my LinkedIn. Or uh, a more consumer-oriented one is like, if the wind starts blowing more than 15 miles an hour, then send me a text. Those are uh, examples of what you can do with if this and that, and which we used as inspiration. So, but if you, the, if this and that is actually mainly targeted at the consumer market, but if you apply that to the enterprise, then you'll get what I call personal workflow. And in personal workflow, employees can connect the events that are happening in the, in the internet of enterprise things and put them to work. So personal workflow is extremely cheap because people can do it themselves. It doesn't require a lot of communication with an IT guy or with other people to get things set up, you just have a small recipe, you just have something small to get going, and you build it yourself. Personal workflow makes people in your organization more professional. And what's effective all about? Effective is about bridging that gap between the enterprise process management, which we all know very well, and um, I believe there's a big gap between the personal workflow, uh, which is currently, I believe, uh, not too much existent, and the enterprise process management. So we want to enable that everyone individually can start adopting it, can start learning the technologies, and that still uh, big corporate initiatives can be done with the same solution. So the way to do that is to start uh, to layer the application very, very carefully, meaning as an entrant user, it should be as easy as email. You should be able to collaborate, share documents, discuss, coordinate tasks, and do your personal workflows without any technical uh, hurdles to overcome. Simple things need to remain simple. You connect your email in your workflows with your documents, uh, your leads in Salesforce or your support cases in whatever system you use for that. And that should be as easy as just configuring. Uh, that might be as hard as, let's say, configuring an email account in your email client. So it's not that straightforward, but still everyone can do it. And then the crucial bit is to hide all the complex stuff which is needed for the more advanced uh, processes, like cust in, including custom code with uh, something like activity workers, also known from Amazon Simple Workflow Service, or transformations, where you convert your process data and uh, reach out maybe to external services uh, through a REST API or whatever. Okay, so let's look uh, how that ended up. So we started about uh, a year ago. We launched in uh, October last year with some private uh, access, giving people, giving a, an initial set of people access. And then in January this year, we uh, launched it open for the public. So now you can actually register on the effective.com website and try it out for yourself. <clears throat> okay. So the solution is divided in two sections. There is a task list for shared collaboration, and there's the processes for automating your workflows. We'll start off with a plain task that does not have any uh, process logic behind it. Uh, some would call that like a case. And in this case, we're going to hire Joey. 
like that's a task I want to get going. I open it up and there's like, a, let's see what stuff has to be done for that. We need like an interview to be taken place. The contract needs to be put in place and an email account has to be created. So these individual tasks are just like checkbox items in this scope, but you can dive in there and they can actually become full cases themselves as well. Um, you can add a comment, and the interesting thing about adding a comment is that you can also address people. So I'm now saying to uh, Mary, like uh, Joey said, and then you can use some simple markup. So also Twitter has some special um, characters that you can use, like the at and the hash sign. There's, uh, for making comments, there's a thing called markdown, which allows you to easily add some little markup to your text format. He said, like, uh, can you send me the contract AS, ASAP? Because I am going on holidays next week. So when I actually refer to Mary, that means she got involved into this task. She got an automatic uh, notification. And uh, one more thing. I almost forgot the template contract to be added to this. OK, let's switch to Mary. So Mary sees this task. She opens it up. She can look at all the context uh, available. And she might rep reply like, thanks. I, uh, as this cost, I will add the non-compete clause and the remove the bonus section. That's not so popular anymore. Right. So and she can actually go into the document, of course, open it up. Uh, so let's go back to, uh, so now I'm back logged in as myself. And uh, I also wanted to show that the event stream that you see here on the right hand side, it contains kind of like an audit trail of what all went into the process or what all happened in this particular task. Uh, so it's an audit trail, but you can trim it down to just the comments, which makes you see the discussion. So if you just want to focus on the discussion and not see all the rest, the same for the documents. If you just want to look at uh, what are all the documents involved here, you can just filter it down. OK. So now let's look. The company is growing. We want to do like loads of hires. So automate that process seems like a good idea. So we create our first process. It's the hire process. and. Here you see the kind of guidance that we try to put into the product. So we start off with a basic question, like how do new hires start? They could have no trigger, so there's no automatic connection, so you manually have to start each one. You can start one when an email arrives at a certain address, which means you could add it to mailing lists, for instance, every time you get an email in support at yourcompany.com, automatically a process starts or you could start a new process when a form is submitted. Okay, for now we'll just keep it like it is and we're guided towards create some actions. So what actions have to be done? Uh, in the simplest possible case, and that's, let's say, we have a five minute promise which we want people to create their first process and have their success experience in five minutes and uh, this is part of it, and that would mean like, just like a template for those tasks that you, we saw earlier. So we're gonna create like a, a task for the interview, one for the contract, and one for the email account. So 
So you see that you can start configuring more details if you want, but that's not necessary. We'll skip those. We go straight through publishing and we start our first hire. We're gonna hire Jack. And we see that the three tasks were just created. So that is like a, what we call like a checklist process. You can check those off if you want and uh, start assigning them. Now the process, I actually created this task and each process instance itself is a full collaboration space. So I can add on the fly um, a background check, for instance. Um, so those could be completed and when the process is done, uh, it just completes. So let's refine that a bit because that's pretty basic. It's very easy, but it's also very basic. So let's refine that. So now we want to add a bit of sequence into that so we have the Synavio editor, as you might or might not know. Synavio is the investor in Effective, and as part of that, uh, we get to leverage their technology, so the Synavio editor is embedded into this product, into Effective. So you connect them up, we republish, and as expected, you get the interview, as the first one, when you complete it, you get the next task and so on. So let's refine that in another step. And this time, we will start adding a decision. And also with the decision, I try to indicate how we try to uh, guide the users and in the initial layer, stay away from expressions and data handling and all that. So we will put the uh, gateway in between. We will say notify the candidate, right? And if you now go into the gateway, it's as simple as configuring two buttons that are added to the previous activity. So we're gonna, so there's like a, how do you say, kind of a macro or like a combination that we worked out that these buttons that you configure are added to the form in the interview task or in the preceding task. So if it's approved, you go to the contract. If it's rejected, then you go to notify the candidate. All right. So what I'll do in one go, I could show that first, but I'm going to also go back to the trigger. And this time we will add a form trigger. And there's like a built-in form editor where you could do like a customer name and the start date, not a customer name, it's actually the candidate name. And the, uh, sorry for that, start date. Voila. So that's what we, uh, yep. So when we publish the start form and the decision, then we get like, John will start next month on the 24th. And you get that as part of the audit trail, the form. And you get the interview task, which has the approve and reject and that all didn't take any configuration or non-technical uh, stuff. So when completing the task, you're guided towards the next task or back to the, like the process task to uh, get an idea of the overview. Um, and that's about it in terms of coordinating tasks for people. So the other thing I'd like to show is when you want to add uh, some JavaScript, so now we are past the point where normal people would do it, right? You want to do some more advanced stuff. Now you can add a JavaScript, uh, some check you want to do. And I just want to indicate how we embedded like a JavaScript editor. Uh, we will later on also enable, or actually that's already uh, implemented now, which is the activity workers pattern, which means that you can actually include code in any programming language. You could uh, 
code Java, run it separately and run that as a content of your activity. Um, that also might be run behind the firewall even, but as part of the product for now, we just add, started with uh, JavaScript because it's very versatile, it's very low entry, and people can get going. And this already allows you to do data manipulation, so you can read and write, get, you get read and write access to the uh, process variables. So, and then you see here, if you enable them, that the candidate name, we didn't confront the original user that created the form with any technical details such as script names, so we generate those on the fly, and towards the developer, we present an environment where he can easily test and try out his scripting. So uh, the, the, the web-based console, so I'll show how you could, hello, so how we actually also have uh, some code completion in there, and we have uh, read and write access to the variables. So candidate names, candidate name equals Mr. Yeah, just like a fake one to give you an example. Then instead of having to run through the process over and over again, we provide the developer with some testing facilities. Um, so if I add John here and I test it, then I get like the log messages and the read and write access in action. I believe, I'm not sure if I'm connected to the internet. So then I can show actually also some access to an external service. How in that scripting, you can call out to a public weather API to check the current weather in London. Here it's not so good, so let's see if it's in London any better. And uh, then you can see that at the moment it's 281 Kelvin in, <laughs> yeah. So that's about nine degrees Celsius, just. I've given this demo so I know the calculation already a little bit. So, but yeah, this, the JavaScript comes in handy to do the conversion actually. So, and that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show you to you today. So with that, I'd like to thank you and open it up for questions.